Welcome to our video, also to Japan issues. United States aid to Ukraine, an investment whose benefits greatly exceed its cost. We would like to share the commentary, November 22, 2022 by Dr. Anthony H. Cordesman, Emeritus Chair in Strategy at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS. So far, there has been only limited domestic political resistance in the United States to continuing civil and military aid to Ukraine. A few political figures like the newly re-elected Marjorie Taylor Greene have taken a totally negative stance. Under Republicans, not another penny will go to Ukraine. Our country comes first, and more recently, a tweet that said, we must stop letting Zelensky demand money and weapons from U.S. taxpayers while he is trying to drag us into World War III. No more money to Ukraine. It's time to end this war and demand peace. There have, however, been more realistic warnings about the possible growth of opposition to such aid like those of House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. I think people are going to be sitting in a recession and they're not going to write a blank check to Ukraine. They just won't do it. A recent poll has also shown that the number of Republicans who feel the U.S. is doing too much for Ukraine rose from 6% in March 2023 to 30% of all Americas, and 48% of all Republicans, at the end of October. These trends warn that there are no guarantees that the U.S. will continue to provide adequate aid to Ukraine in a future where Ukraine may need major amounts of U.S. humanitarian, civil, and military aid for years to come, and where getting Russia to pay for any major aspect of the Ukraine's recovery after a peace settlement seems to be more of a dream than any credible reality. Much of this rising U.S. opposition to continuing aid to Ukraine does, however, come from only considering its cost and ignoring the strategic benefits it provides to the U.S. It is developing because far too much of the reporting on the Ukraine war ignores the fact that the U.S. has already obtained major strategic benefits from aiding the Ukraine. And that such aid it is one of the best investments the U.S. can make in competing with Putin's Russia and in advancing its own security. Focusing on the price tag of aid. Instead of the value of what it buys, ignores the fact that the war in Ukraine has become the equivalent of a proxy war with Russia, and a war that can be fought without any U.S. military casualties. That unites most of the world's democracies behind a common cause, that deeply punishes Russia for its act of aggression and strengthens every aspect of deterrence. It ignores the fact that costs of such aid are low in grand strategic terms and seem likely to be far lower than the cumulative cost of the fighting to save an Afghan government that never began to approach the Ukraine's unity and national commitment to defend itself. Such a focus not only ignores the moral and ethical commitment the U.S. should have to every other free nation, it ignores the fact that Russia is far poorer than the U.S. and its allies. It ignores the fact that Russia is already paying far more of its gross national product and economy to fight the war in the Ukraine than the U.S. and its partners. And that Russia has suffered massive losses of weapons, war reserves, and military personnel. As is discussed in detail later in this analysis. U.S. aid has so far enabled Ukraine to do immense damage to Russia's overall capability to threaten Europe and to fight any future conflict. It ignores the practical benefits of the message that sending such aid to the Ukraine has sent to our strategic partners and allies about American capability and resolve. It ignores the extent to which such aid has put practical limits on Putin's ambitions to restore a greater Russia, and shown other states that they can trust the U.S. to compete with China. It ignores the extent to which such aid helps to rebuild and strengthen the role America plays as the de facto leader of the West and other democratic states. It ignores the degree to which it has revitalized NATO and European defense effort. It ignores role that the key allies like Britain, France, Germany, Canada, Poland, 
Other NATO and EU states, and nations outside of Europe like Japan, are also playing in providing aid to the Ukraine. It also ignores the relative economic cost to such nations in providing such aid and joining with the US in sanctioning Russia. While the level of aid from other states has been much lower than the levels of US aid, most of our European and partners and allies are suffering far more from the economic consequences of their support for Ukraine and rise in global energy costs than Americans. While inflation in the U.S. reached 7.7% in November 2022, it reached 11.1% in the United Kingdom, 11.6% in Germany, and 14.3% in the Netherlands. It ignores the ongoing changes to Russian strategy that now combine defense in depth with a massive series of strikes on the economy and civilian infrastructure of Ukraine. It ignores the all-too-real limits of Ukraine's military victories, its many vulnerabilities, and the fact that Russia is now fighting a brutal war of attrition against both civilian and military targets and that Ukraine can only continue fighting with major U.S. aid. And it ignores the fact that the planning of U.S. aid must be tied directly to the search for a viable peace settlement and that there is no practical chance that such a peace can be won on terms that are acceptable to Ukraine without making a lasting commitment to support Ukraine until Russia is forced to accept such a settlement. It ignores the need to work with the Ukraine and other aid donors to agree on what such a peace should be, to coordinate efforts to pressure Russia into accepting peace terms acceptable to Ukraine and reach a common agreement with Ukraine as to what peace terms will be acceptable. The challenge of future aid needs. This does not mean that the cost of continuing U.S. aid until the war is ended on terms that favor Ukraine will not be high, or that further aid will not be needed to help the Ukraine recover from the war and maintain the forces it needs to deter Russia, it does not mean the cost of aid should not be continuously examined. And that the need to plan and manage such aid as effectively as possible is not a serious issue. Ukraine will probably need years of future support. And the U.S. has already budgeted major amounts of money. The Congress authorized some $53 billion in military and civil aid by May 2022, with a $13.6 billion initial vote for an emergency aid for the war, followed by $40 billion in military and civil aid in May 10, 2022. There is no clear official reporting on the total flow of total aid authorizations and actual spending to date. But the U.S. has stated that it had already came close to spending $20 billion in military assistance alone by mid-November 2030. Secretary of Defense Austin announced that the U.S. had spent $18.6 billion in military aid. The State Department reported that it had spent some $10 billion more on civilian aid as of mid-November 2020. It is also clear that America's strategic partners and other nations have provided billions of dollars in additional aid. Billions of dollars do matter and come at the cost of alternative uses of the money, although one needs to be a little cautious about tying such costs to the overall rate of inflation and the health of the American economy. The U.S. national security budget is well in excess of $800 billion, including nuclear weapons and security assistance. The Congressional Budget Office estimates the total U.S. federal budget will make outlays reaching $5,872 billion in fiscal 2023, of $4,795 billion is on budget. The U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, BEA, estimated that the U.S. economy was still growing steadily as of October 2022 along with personal income, and was estimated to have reached $25.66 trillion. In current dollars, at least to date, aid to Ukraine had only a negligible impact on both total federal spending and the U.S. economy. The shape of costs to come. The costs to date, however, 
are only part of the story and Ukraine can only succeed and survive as a functioning state if the U.S. provides continuing military and civil assistance as long as Russia pursues the war. Aid to help Ukraine bear that the cost of the fighting must also be followed by U.S. aid to help Ukraine recover. The cost of such recovery is going to be high and it is steadily rising as Russia launches more and more attacks on Ukrainian civilian facilities and its critical infrastructure. Even in September 2013 before the full Russian assault on the civil economy and infrastructure of Ukraine had begun, estimates were being issued that rebuilding the Ukraine's economy infrastructure and civil facilities could cost some $349 billion. This figure now seems far too low in light of Russia's steadily escalating attacks on the Ukraine's entire civil and economic infrastructure. Any estimates of the overall civil and military costs of the war to Ukraine by the time any kind of peace or settlement is reached are highly uncertain. There are no reliable ways to estimate the future cost of the fighting. Worse, Russia's steady escalation of its strikes on civilian targets in Ukraine have already made it clear that the cost of supporting both the war and recovery will steadily rise until there is some form of settlement or ceasefire.